Uh, welcome everyone back to the School of Greatness podcast. We've got the legendary Dr. Gundry in the house. Thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. I'm Pleasure. Like, I'm excited about this and you just opened it up. We'll probably leave that in there. Um, kind of your mission is to end disease. And then you're saying it all comes through the gut. It starts and ends with the gut. Correct. Everything. Everything what we eat can can solve the disease we have within us, right? Correct. Based on the foods that we put inside of us. It can actually extend our lifespan to potentially things that people can't even imagine. Wow. And it actually has to do not with you and me and what we conceive of our bodies, but it turns out that 90% of all the cells that make you and me, me, are actually non-human cells. They're bacteria, viruses, funguses, worms that live in us and on us. Wow. And the shocking thing is that 99% of all the genes that make up you and me are non-human genes. What are they? They're bacterial and huh. viral genes. And what we've completely missed from the Human Genome Project is that we have actually very few genes, and our genes are about 99% the same as a chimp or a gorilla. And we're very different than chimps or gorillas, and yet we have virtually the same genes. What makes us different is actually the bacteria and viruses that live in us. We have different bacteria we and have, viruses. And you can actually show when humans evolved from the other great apes that our bacteria actually changed and we can actually identify that point in time that the bacteria made us rather than our genes made us so the bacteria made us human or bacteria made us yeah they actually as shocking as it may seem most of what happens to us is determined by the state and the variation of our bacteria bacteria primarily in our gut uh, give you an example. You can take um, a bowel movement from an obese individual and feed it to a skinny rat. Uh, skinny rats love to eat poop. <laughs> right. And those skinny rats will become fat. Really? Because the bacteria have actually manipulated their feeding habits. They actually send text messages to the brain to go look for foods that they would not otherwise consume mm. that those bacteria want. And we can actually, there was a cool study in a marathon runner. Uh, you're a great athlete. Mm. So there's a woman marathon runner in England a couple of years ago who developed a very severe um, infection in her colon called C. difficile. A lot of people have heard of it. Okay. And the modern treatment of this now is a fecal transplant. Uh, taking poop from somebody else and shoving it up your ass. Wow. And you try to get a fecal transplant from a family member because, believe it or not, family members tend to share their bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, I share a lot of bacteria with my dogs, and they share with me. Mm -hmm. So they found a cousin who was a good match for her, and she got the fecal transplant, and everything went well. Her C. difficile went away. We can go into why that happened. In the next year, this marathon runner gained 32 pounds wow. without changing anything. And it turns out her niece, cousin, was actually 30, about 32 pounds overweight. And so she was inoculated with obesogenic wow. bacteria. And her bacteria, these little, you know, one-cell organisms, controlled her behavior. Wow. Do, 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 do. <laughs> now, th think about that. So it made her, made her more hungry or yeah, desirable made her certain hungry. foods. Yeah, exactly. So she changed the way she was eating because she was triggered Being in a different way. manipulated. Wow. Being manipulated. Well, it's What's, kind of like when you're, you know, I, I love candy and sweets. I've never been drunk and I don't drink. But my vice is like I could eat cakes and candy and brownies all day long if I choose to. And, and then when I when I go off of it, it's hard because I just want to keep going back to it. Oh, right? yeah. Until I change the habit fully. And then I'm like, I don't need it anymore. Right. But it takes that time to kind of transition out of it, right? Yeah, these are very addictive foods. Yeah. And it, they're, they're addictive because 
what happens is like simple sugars like in candies and cakes mm-hmm. and saturated fats like on the icing and you know the coating on the donut yes. and all oh it's so good yeah uh, yeah <laughs> uh used to love them uh, yeah <laughs> and so these things actually the obesogenic bacteria can actually live on them they love it they love simple sugars they love saturated fats and they go oh, yeah 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 give me mm-hmm. more and they actually tell our brain to And it turns out that this whole concept is actually true, that our bacteria control our behavior. Hmm. For instance, you can take depressed mice and put their bacteria in happy mice, and those happy mice will go go hide in a corner and not come out. In fact, in the 1930s, they did an experiment in a... uh, Back in those days, most really depressed people were institutionalized. So they did an experiment where they gave them all colonics and cleaned out their colons. And then they gave them fecal enemas from happy people. No way. And about two-thirds of the depressed people got happy and were released in the 1930s. Wow. So, I mean, it's just you start looking at this and go, whoa, you know, we're, we're probably looking at the wrong stuff. For instance, one of the things that I'm talking about uh, in Berlin in October at the World Congress of Microbiota, that's what the study is, Mm -hmm. we now know that you can take bacteria from young animals' guts and put them in old animals' guts, and the old animals will become young again. No way. You mean um, like with the fountain of youth? No way. So they'll like their cells will get younger. Yes. Or they'll have youthful energy or what? All of the above. They will actually extend their lifespan by about thirty percent. What? Yeah, because here's the deal. What 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 I'm trying to get people to understand is this is not about you and me or what we conceive as us this we're just a condominium for the people who really run us and Mm. these are all these little one cellular organisms and what we're beginning to realize is we're a condominium for these bugs and we're their home we've exchanged them living in us and actually taking care of us for food and Mm. and shelter for them And it's crazy. The, I know. And the really cool thing is, so we can take bacteria from young animals, you know, and put them into old animals. And the bacteria say, man, this place is decrepit. You know, I, I need to do a complete total renovation here because this is where I'm stuck and I bought, better make the best of it. Mm-hmm. And I want everything to be nice. You know, it's like, you know, yeah. gentrification of yeah, the yeah, neighborhood. Of and this actually... So what do they do? So they actually instruct. Here's, here's the take-home message. They actually send te- text messages to the mitochondria. And you probably know all about mitochondria, yes. the little energy organelles. Yes. In the these, brain, right? In, 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 in every one, one of you, life. but the brain has the most of yes. them. And these produce energy. These mitochondria are actually engulfed bacteria. And... As strange as it may seem, the bacteria in your gut send text messages to the mitochondria Mm -hmm. that say, guys, new sheriffs in town, clean up your act. We want you guys working and humming on all, you know, eight cylinders. It's kind of like General Kelly coming into the White House and, you know, total disarray. And it was going, okay, guys, no more of this silliness. And so we now have discovered some of those compounds that, the bacteria in your gut signal the mitochondria to regenerate themselves. And it's, mm. it's I mean, it's opening up just, whole new areas that we never even dreamed of. What I've been doing for the last 17 years is giving my bacteria what all the research that I've done and many other people have done would predict that my bacteria are pretty doggone happy with mm-hmm. what I'm doing for them. Wow. And they're exchanging that happiness to say, man, this is a great place to live and we're going to keep this place buffed, nice and nice clean. And, and just happy. We're doing heart surgeries, 10,000 of them, and yeah. said, 
I don't want to be offensive here. I'll make sure I'm saying the right thing. But you're now essentially a functional med doctor. Yeah, I don't in, understand. In a sense, right? Correct. I, um, with, all, not, with all due respects to Mark Hyman, yes. uh, Jeff Bland created the uh, created functional medicine, and Jeff's a friend of mine. I don't know what functional medicine right, means. Right, right, right. What I do is restorative medicine. Great. Right. All of us have the power to heal ourselves. Now, the guy who said this was Hippocrates. And Hippocrates, uh, brilliant, he, he believed that any organism had the ability to have perfect health hmm. and that every organism had the ability to achieve perfect health as long as the obstacles to perfect health were removed. Hmm. And Hippocrates believed that the physician's job was to identify the obstacles to that organism having perfect health, the patient and remove them from the patient, and right. the patient would do the rest. Yeah. So what, what I try to do, I basically do detective work, and I think I'm pretty good at finding the obstacles, and many of those obstacles, believe it or not, are lectins. Mm. And the other obstacle is you got to get the gang members out of your gut by basically starving them to death and giving the good guys what they want to eat. Starving them of the lectins. Starving them of simple sugars yes. and lectins and saturated fats. Like you Remove those things. Yeah, they, they have nothing to eat and they leave. For instance, I'll give you an example of something interesting. Uh, we actually have bacteria in our gut that enjoy eating gluten. Uh, a lectin. Really? Yeah, they love it. But if you go gluten-free... They leave because they got nothing to eat. Yes. And then a lot of people who go gluten free and don't notice a whole lot of difference, or they just get frustrated and then they and they have a couple pieces of bread or mm. pizza, mm. and Gosh, then all of a so sudden good. their gut goes, oh, you know. Well, it's because <laughs> their bugs that could defend them against gluten are gone. Are gone. Oh. And it, believe it or not, gluten is kind of a, a low level lectin. There's far worse. The the worst ones are in the hall of the grain. So, for instance, this whole gr whole grain goodness, this only started about 50 years ago. No such so thing as whole grain goodness. No, we've gotten sicker and sicker and sicker because the outside of the hall <laughs> has the lectins. And we've been throwing it away. I mean, really, the French, seriously, would they have a whole grain croissant uh, or a whole grain baguette? Really? And the Italians, you know, whole grain pasta. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's appearing on the menus because the tourists want to see it. it. Yeah. But the Italians would kill themselves. Right, right. Yeah, the first thing I opened up right here is the most popular nut is not a nut, the peanut. The peanut. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Sorry. The and sign. a cashew. A cashew is a nut, too. I can't eat cashews? No. The Amazonian Indians always threw the cashew bean away. Uh, what, if, what if I eat... <laughs> Manipulate it in a certain way and make it into a sauce. And you could pressure cook it. I can pressure cook cashews. Yeah. Then I can eat it. Yes. And what stay away peanuts? from chia seeds. No chia seeds? No. These are all the things people are telling you to eat right now. Uh, of course. And that's why everybody's getting sicker. Chia seeds. There's two human studies that show that chia seeds promote inflammation in human beings. 